Welcome to the third part of this presentation. And thanks again, Nadia, for your generosity in letting me share my content with your listeners. So we have already seen how the draconic chart is dependent on the tropical chart because the starting point is the placement of our North Node. And it's important to take into account that when we overlay both charts, the draconic houses are going to express the inner level, the internal level. Okay, so for instance, let's focus on the draconic ascendant. If my tropical ascendant has to do with my body, my outlook on life, how others see me, what motivates me, the draconic ascendant is going to represent all that, but in an internal level. Okay, and I'm going to be able to express that deep motivation through the house, through the tropical house that is linked to the draconic ascendant. So for instance, let me give you some examples of this. If the draconic ascendant is linked to the second house, I'm going to be motivated or I'm going to be able to express my inner self through making money or through financial security. Or if the draconic ascendant is linked to the tropical third house, I'm going to express my deepest self through communications or through writing or through studying. Let me show you an example of this. I think that Oprah Winfrey is a wonderful example of how this works because we can see how her draconic ascendant is linked to the tropical second and third houses. For instance, if my draconic ascendant is linked to the fifth house, my deepest motivations are going to be expressed through art, entertainment, children. Let's have a look at an example of this. Angelina Jolie has the draconic ascendant on the tropical fifth house. And also this draconic ascendant is very, very near the North Node. So what that, that does is it makes things bigger. And she has many, many children, of course. I like this chart a lot because I think that the draconic chart in the case of Angelina Jolie makes much more sense than the tropical chart. We're going to have the same placements. For instance, in the tropical chart, Venus is in the first and in the draconic chart, Venus is also in the first. This is always the case, but in a different sign. And we see that Scorpius rising. I think that that makes much more sense than Cancer rising. Also, we can see, we can also see how the moon is in Leo instead of in Aries, which makes a lot of sense as well. When we look at the draconic 12th house or the tropical 12th house in comparison with the draconic layer, this is very important because the 12th house is a house of sorrow. It's a house where we have problems, where we have very complicated issues. So um, wherever we have this combination of the tropical and the draconic or vice versa, that is an area of our lives, of our lives where there, there will be suffering, okay? Let's have a look at an example of this. For instance, in this chart, the draconic ascendant is on the seventh. And this makes us think that for this person, the, seven, the relationships are going to be very, very important. But if we look at the draconic 12th, it is exactly conjunct Mercury and Mercury rules the seventh. So for this person, relationships are very, very important, but sorrow is to be expected through those relationships. And of course, we're talking about Princess Diana. I hope this was helpful and I hope you like Draconic Astrology as much as I do. I will see you in a few minutes with the last part of this presentation. Thank you for being there.